Hey everybody, Brian from Khaki Shorts. Today we are going to do something a little different than we usually do. Usually we're going out in Phuket and kind of showing you places that we've been and things to do. Today we are going to take some questions from social media. I'm going to show you what some of the other users give for their answers and then I'll give you what I think you should do. This is Khaki Shorts where we cover travel, food, and just utter nonsense. So these all come from Reddit, from the subreddit Phuket, which has questions from expats, from potential tourists, from people that actually still live here or live other places that want to visit here. So we kind of get a little mix of a little bit of everything. This question comes from Sunlush. It says, I want a clean massage in Phuket, Thailand. How do I make sure I don't get the wrong massage parlor or service? I'm taking a girl's trip to Phuket, Thailand. We plan on getting massages every day. We definitely do not want a dirty slash adult massage. I'm afraid we're going to step into the wrong place and get the wrong service. How do I differentiate between a reputable massage parlor and a shady one? Any recommendations for clean massage parlors near Ban Mai Resort? Okay, before I give you my answer, let's see what one of the users had to say. This is from Ratskim. Go to a parlor slash spa that looks professional, the kind of place you might find back home. Not some tiny shop front with 10 women sitting outside scantily clad telling you how GD handsome you are. That's actually some pretty good advice. Uh, <laughs> there are going to be lots of sketchy places like that, but being women, you are probably not going to have to worry too much about the dirty massages. That's more for the men. You can pretty much look at a place and tell if it looks nice and clean, if they're professional. We have two places we like to go on the island. There's one in Chelong called Ked, and there's another one right across the street called Nara. Both of those, they're really nice. You walk in, they're professional, they're not scantily clad women coming out to find you know you, you can really tell it's not that hard so just look around and worst case just ask your resort if they don't have a spa there ask them a good place around there that can give you and your your ladies a nice clean massage and they'll be able to uh, to hook you up with somebody okay next question this is also from reddit from the subreddit phuket and this post is by fluffy ad 7392 what's the best cinema for mission impossible I'm looking for the best cinema screening experience possible to watch the new Mission Impossible film. Any recommendations? So Mui Lao answers, got to be Central Phuket SFX. Watch out though, they crank the AC all the way up, bring warm clothes or a blanket. And to that, Novel Swimmer 8284 answers, why do all these cinemas in Thailand do this? I went to see Top Gun while I was there. I had to go to the toilet for like 10 times during the movie because I was freezing inside. The SFX Cinema at Central Phuket Festival is actually our favorite as well. We've gone and seen quite a few movies there. Uh, actually, on Wednesdays is their discount day. So if you're here and you've got some time and want to go see a movie, go see it on Wednesdays. A little bit cheaper. Uh, they do keep it a little cold in there. I've never gotten to the point where I had to put on a blanket or a jacket. Uh, my wife sometimes will bring a shawl or something because she gets a little chilly. Uh, one thing I can recommend is try the caramel popcorn. They have like four or five different flavors. Caramel, there's original, there's butter, there's sour cream and onion sometimes, cheese. There's just some weird ones. But the caramel popcorn to us is the best. Okay, here's a question that actually concerns our neck of the woods down here in Cape Panama. Let's see what it is. So this question comes by Rich Honeydew. Cape Panama Phuket Transport. I'll be staying a few nights in Cape Panama. What's the best way to get to other places like Old Town? And what is the cheapest slash best transport to the airport? So Comprehensive Yam replies, post to Phuket Facebook group and you'll get a zillion people contacting you. Chat with a few of them to get a read on their pricing. For reference, my regular van driver charges 600 for airport to Surin Beach, which is about 30 to 40 minutes from the airport. Panama will probably be a little bit more as it's further from the airport. You can also try to use InDriver, Grab, or Bolt for transport, but it can be variable as far as timing and accepting jobs, especially during busy periods like rush hour or evenings. So since we live in Cape Panama, we actually have a car. Uh, we bought one about a month ago because it's just easier to get around. Uh, we still use InDrive and Bolt sometimes uh, before we got our car to get off of Cape Panama. It's a little less touristy here. It's a lot less touristy, actually. So sometimes it's harder to get a driver because there's just not as many around. Uh, there's not a Song Pao that goes from Cape Panama to Phuket Town. So usually you're going to have to take one of those uh, app services to get there. Uh, as far as the airport is concerned, I would not take a taxi at the airport. Let's just say that they're, they're not the most reputable in the world and they uh, have been some scams. 
So usually we do the same thing, use your end driver. You might have to walk out of the airport to the road to pick up because the taxi drivers there get very territorial, I guess you could say, almost to the violent point sometimes. We actually have a couple of drivers that we use on a regular basis when we need to go back and forth to the airport. There's one who uh, has a van, like a big Toyota van. So if you have a large party or you have a bunch of luggage, uh, we usually call him so that he can pick us up. He'll pick you up directly at the airport. I think he has a taxi license. From the airport to Cape Panama is a thousand baht, uh, which US is about $30, which is a little more than it would be if you were going to Batang or Kata or Caron or to Phuket Town, but we are further down another 20 minutes or so. The thousand baht to be dropped off right at the airport, it's really not that bad. All right, next question is about staying in Kamala Beach. So this question comes from Traditional Injury 95. Booked at Kamala. First time in Phuket and I'm worrying if I booked at the right beach, Kamala Beach. What to expect? Been watching YouTube videos and considered Kamala Beach as my final choice. We'll be there to drink, beach, and chill. I'm booked on the 15th to the 19th of July. I've been seeing posts about sewage issues. Will I miss out on a lot if I don't book at Patong? Should I rebook at Patong, Kata, or Karong? Well, Ang CLE Joe replies, The sewage problem may or may not affect you as the hotels periodically dump their wastewater into the canals. And this problem affects most of the West Coast beaches for a long time now. Personally, Kamala is a great place for me as I'm not too heavy into partying. A nice long beach with the beachfront bars and restaurants work for me and the family. There will be spaces between beach vendors that have a bit more trash, so you're just going to have to play your part not to make it worse, or even better yet, help clean them up. If you like to shop or bar hop on a daily basis, then Batang is definitely better for that. Beach is way cleaner, but the road size can be a bit chaotic and vendors consistently calling out for a deal and lots of tuk-tuks wanting your attention. I would still plan on today's trip to Pekong just to see what's going on there. And then Tortoise888 says just take a look at Bolt slash Grab to Patong if you really want to party. It's only a 12 minute ride. And since we've retired here and we're really not into the partying scene, we stay kind of on the east side of the island. Uh, in Panwa and Phuket Town. We do, we do know that side of the island decently well. Kamala is nice. We actually looked at maybe moving over that way. It's north of Batang a little bit. Uh, it's kind of over a mountain. It's a little quiet. It's definitely quieter than Batang. Batang is party central for Phuket. So if you want to be partying all night, then go to Batang. If you kind of want to get away from that and have a little stretch of beach that's a little quieter and still have restaurants, and some bars to go to and things like that, then Kamala is, is perfectly fine. Okay, our final question is about the weather. This question comes from Rudiv29. Phuket weather, July 10th to July 16th. Hello folks, I'll be traveling to Phuket and Bangkok between July 10 and July 16th. How are the weather conditions? Is it raining heavily? I was hoping to travel to a couple of islands and wanted to plan accordingly. I would be grateful if you could confirm this. And Bart Turner answers, is this a serious post? First, how would we know any better than you would? But more importantly, it is the tropics. It is next to impossible to predict the weather an hour from now, let alone five days from now. It's the rainy season. I would expect rain on most of those days. Not all days, but a few hours of the day. Yeah, the weather here in the low season in Phuket and in Thailand is hard to predict even an hour out from now. I've used three or four different weather apps and none of them seem to be extremely accurate. Uh, low season, uh, last summer my son came in August and he had 10 days of beautiful weather with one little shower in between the whole time. And then we've also been here during the low season and had four to five days of almost nonstop rain. So you really cannot plan for that. Just come thinking there's going to be some rain and you might have some sunshine or spaces in between that doesn't have rain. But it's really hard to plan during low season. You're definitely going to get cheaper prices on a lot, on everything. Resorts, hotels, everything's going to be a little cheaper, airfare usually. But you're also taking the risk about not knowing what the weather's going to be. So thanks for hanging with me this long. I hope to help answer a few of your questions and the Reddit users' questions. So be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos about our life here in Thailand and our trips around the world.